Hey everybody, we're going to check out the 2024 IFBB Texas Pro Open Men's Bodybuilding Prejudging. You're going to hear my commentary and reaction as we go through it and then stay tuned towards the end and I will give you my recap and breakdown on how everything played out following finals. So what we're going to see here are some group callouts that happen first. This is just the competitors lined up in groups in alphabetical order. Then everybody files away. They all come on for their individual presentation and after that then we do the official callouts and shuffling of placings to determine how everyone's going to finish. There is a little technical issue here. There was an issue with the live stream I had to reboot my computer so there's a section that's missing not too bad though we missed a few guys individual presentations but not too bad so let's check it out ladies and gentlemen our first group of man there's a couple of the big midsections up there uh-oh live stream took a shit mm-hmm it's coming back somebody tripped over a cord Okay, we're back from technical issues here. I don't know what happened, but the live stream took a dump on me. So I don't know what I missed. Clearly, we're in with the guys here, but. Uh, Chinese mask monster. That's racist. Does have a really good shape. So he was 11th in Tampa last week, 7th in Vancouver before then. Yeah. A little soft in that hamstring and glute. Yeah, upper body looks great. Good midsection control. I don't know whose voice that is, but I want to hear less of him. Yeah, that was a good shot. Hamstrings are kind of gnarly. His color is off. That's correct. I do not like that pose. Yeah, that's a good shot. It's a really good shot. Yep. This will be Nathan Epler next. All right, next up, we know who this is, Nathan Epler. Nathan Epler he was fourth in Chicago. Indianapolis, Indiana. Had an amazing showing at Chicago Pro. He did. Yeah. And he's, he, uh, he's definitely better here. Yeah. We're both Midwest boys, so it's, it's cool to see him showing out like this. God, I cannot stand that guy's voice. Holy crap. That's a great shot. It looks super full. Really nailed conditioning. In that shot, you can Looks like you really nailed a good carb up. Lower back on the other side. That's, I mean, this is impressive. Very nice combination of fullness and conditioning. I absolutely hate that move. So that, that, like, come on, people, right clap for me. It's like, make people clap for you by how you perform on stage and how you look, not by telling them. I just, I, universally, whenever anybody does that move, I hate it. I hate it. This pose looks kind of weird. Like, his proportion isn't great on that pose. I think the glute conditioning is part of it. Varicose veins on the right leg, fix that shit. It's bad. Yeah, he's got varicose ve veins that need to be addressed for sure. I see a lot of pros like that. I mean, Nick Walker, of course, is the poster child for that. Yeah, the stomping into position is getting overdone. Yeah. There's some really good things about this physique, and then there's some things that just don't really work. It's kind of ridiculous to look at a guy like this and say he needs more mass, but it's just like he's got mass. It's just not all in the right places. Like his delts are really getting overpowered by everything else. His midsection there, it, I mean, he's already like put really, really struggling to hold that in. Back is not very wide there at all. Yeah, so his his midsection is hard to control. Like that looks great. He's just struggling to control it on other poses. He just has very weak lats. Very weak lats. Muscle maturity is just them saying you're old. Here's Dorian Haywood. He's one of the guys I wanted to watch. This is his fourth show. Did New York and Cali in back-to-back -back weeks, couple months off. Earlier this year, it was last week, dude. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this looks like his fourth show of the year. <laughs> he looks very comfortable. He looks tired. For open men's bodybuilding, one of the things that I'm watching the most is can you control your midsection? This is okay conditioning. This is not really good conditioning. This is pretty okay to good conditioning. 
that back is soft. He's also not square. <laughs> He's off angle. In that shot there, he almost looked totally relaxed. Shaking like hell right now. And now we're going to be able to see how they look, how that matches up. Yeah. His placings have been 13th, 10th, 12th. That looks about right. It's probably going to be something along those lines today, too. Now we have Jordan Hutchinson, who is fifth in Chicago, third in Tampa. Very excited about this one. So third last week. Third in Tampa Pro just a couple weeks ago. Last week. Not a couple weeks ago. It was last week. Jesus Christ, guys. I don't know what he looked like last week. I didn't watch the Tampa Pro. This is good. It doesn't blow me away. Yeah. Lower body is ridiculous, and upper body is just soft comparatively. It's a good shot right there. Is separating him from being a third place at Tampa to... A first call out, seventh, eighth place at the Olympia right now in your eyes, other than just, of course, he needs more muscle. That's the way it really comes down. Yeah, I mean, you put him next to the guys that are winning these shows, he's just going to be smaller. This is pro champ trying to make it a three piece. So, okay. it was pretty ridiculous. Um, like, this is like, you know, the real guy just showed up on stage. <laughs> it's, I mean, this is this is light years ahead of anybody else that we've seen so far today. Again, I missed the first few guys, but um, it's like, okay, so everybody else is going for second, I guess. <laughs> glute, glute hamstring is there. It's not the tightest that we've seen, but it's tight enough. Well, they aren't here on stage, so it doesn't fucking matter. Like, that's insane. That is absolutely insane. Yeah. Yeah, it is insane. And like I said, we gotta just take some time and appreciate what we're seeing right now, which is a world class physique. He's way better than he was last year. I mean, everybody on stage here is a world class physique. Let's not undersell him by saying that. When I say somebody doesn't have this or they're missing that or they're kind of like meh, that's meh in the context of well, they are world class though. So let's just keep that in mind. It's all relative. I'd like to see somebody beat that. Uh, talk about that mental approach while we introduce this athlete. Yeah, sure. Next up, we got Anthony Jail coming on his rookie year. Had a fifth place finish at the Portugal Pro mm. earlier this year. Nice. I mean, biceps kind of overpower everything else. It's a good shot there. Like, he's not winning this show, but that's a really impressive shot. That's a really good pose for him. Yeah, if this is really his first uh, his first season as a pro, doing fourth shows, I think, makes a lot of sense. The show's in Italy. He took fifth, fourth, and fifth in Spain, Italy, and Portugal, respectively. I don't see him taking a top five spot here, based on what I've seen so far. Um, but that's a really good good base of experience for your first year as a pro. You know, he's, he's from France, so do three shows closer to home. Go to the States, do a show there. Now I would call it after this. I wouldn't keep doing it. <laughs> Felix Norman is next, so he did Chicago, finished 11th, and then last week in Tampa was 7th. Yeah, really good physique, really good balance. Do doesn't have the wow factor. They said rookie year. Doesn't, doesn't look like a rookie to me. Like he, he's got pretty pretty advanced level conditioning and size here. It's just you know he's not. So I think he's not winning this show, right? But like it's it's a good showing. A um, little thick in the uh, midsection of the lower back on that pose. Like that's the thing on the side poses, you can suck it in. On the front, you can vacuum in. On the back pose, if you've got weaknesses in the midsection and you're a little thick back there, it's hard to hide it. He doesn't look all that nervous to me. I mean, here's the thing. You're, you're a pro, right? This is his third pro show of the year. How many shows has he done before this? Even at amateur shows, like, you know, everybody gets nerves before a show, but he doesn't look nervous to me. He looks, no. They're saying that just because it's his first year, but no, I don't, I don't see it. First show of the year. He looks like he's, what, 5'4"? I think he's actually coached by Ben Chow. Awesome. Very good. Yeah, he's another guy from the UK. Little, little undersized. Again, 
in the context of world-class physique, a little undersized. Midsection isn't as tight as it is on some others. Conditioning's there. It's good. He might, he'll be in the mix for a first call. It could be, eh, borderline, maybe. I'm going to take a stab at this. Josu Placentia. I might have mangled that. I don't know. He did the Vancouver show. He was 10th. Keep that midsection tight when you walk into position, dude. Like, you can suck it in. Don't blow it out. Oh, God, no. Oh, he's got to control that midsection. Whenever you're on stage, you suck it in. You got to suck it in harder than that. Uh -uh. In every single division in bodybuilding, it doesn't matter bikini, bodybuilding. The mid, if the midsection is not in, you're you're gonna have a hard time winning and, and doing really well at this level. But this, yeah. guy's, this guy's physique's really good. He's got big arms. He's got this big guy's physique arms. is okay. My goodness, very long torso. Like he's got some strength, but he's got a lot of holes too. Uh, no, there's just no control. Like he was actually like blowing out his gut right there. Like, no, 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 no. That's just it. One of those. That's one of those things that I see that, and I think like, how does somebody that has the habit of doing that get on the pro stage? Like you just you can't you can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah, I mean this is. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of these kind of guys. Like, his legs look ridiculous. His upper body is average at best. Right? I mean, suck in that gut, dude. Jeez, you got to realize in that side pose, you're exposed. Like, we can all see it. We can all see how distended your gut is. You still aren't sucking it in. Suck it in. Jesus. I mean, it's just, it's a rookie amateur mistake. Suck it in. Suck it in. Please. You gotta suck in your gut, man. In bodybuilding, everybody's looking at that. Everybody wants to see who has the GH gut on stage. You gotta hide it. You just gotta do better than that. Not good enough. Not good enough. His whole upper body is just off and slow. No mid-second control on that turn. No, do, hit an abdominal thigh for us. See if you can show us then. Yeah, you can control it. It has to be like that the entire time you're on stage. <laughs> the athletes that have the tattoos. Are my tattoos going to affect my placing? No. He's 13th in Tampa. A lot of these guys coming over from Europe doing multiple shows back to back, which is, you know, obviously for um, financial reasons, the smart way to do it. Like if you're going to make the trip to the States, do a couple shows while you're here. Solid physique, very well balanced. Midsection really is lacking a little bit here, like the definition. The shape is there. The control is there. Suck it in. Yeah. This is a first call out look for me. Like that pose is awesome. Yeah. His side shots are awesome. Now, is his back going to show through? That's a real question here. Yeah, but saying that somebody could have a little bit tighter condition is almost universally correct. When you can't say that, it's the exception. Of course he could, but it looks good. His back is a little weak. His back, those side shows, side poses, if I were him, I would be spending all my time on stage in those side poses because they look insane. Really, really good. Yeah, he looks great. I, I, I don't think it's a leanness issue at all. Yeah, that was really, really good. Really good. So I missed the first four guys here, so I didn't see them. But we'll see what we got. Lewis Breed I did not see. He was fifth in Tampa. I want to see Lewis Breed. The Asian gentleman. Yishan Cheng is his name. Four guys in the first call out. So Lewis Breed is on the left there. Lewis Breed, Nathan Epler, Jordan Hutchinson, yeah, Andrew, Andrew Jacked. I don't agree with Jordan necessarily. I don't think so. Grant, when I was call, when I was thinking guys would be first call out, I was thinking they'd probably have six or seven up here, not just four. Oh, you wanted to move them one more. Okay, okay. there you go. Yeah, see, it, yeah. Right see, side that's, by that's, side. That's yeah, so it's Nathan Epler and Andrew Jacked in the middle. Lewis 
versus Andrew Minnie. I mean, to me, Jordan Hutchinson doesn't belong in this call out. Like, he's the clear fourth. There's first, second, third. There's a lot of distance. And then there's fourth. So Lewis Breed also on the left. This is my first time seeing him. So I don't know what he looks like from behind yet. To be clear, Andrew Jack is winning this show. I mean, <laughs> there's not a lot of suspense here, right? <laughs> Give me a break. So Lewis on this shot here, the lower body looks great. That quad hamstring glute separation, just like anatomy chart level detail, really good. Lewis, his back pose is not right. Like, he's not hitting it correctly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> that pose is Andrew Jack and everybody else. It's ridiculous. And for him to be taller than everybody else on stage is just unfair. There's, there's a technical term for a guy like Andrew Jack, and that term is asshole. Like, fuck that guy. I'm sure he's the nicest guy in the world, but I hate him. <laughs> in, in the best possible way, I hate him. Give me a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're not going to want to see those photos, though. <laughs> like, you standing next to him. Like, it doesn't look good. They're close. No, they're not. Very, very, very close. They're really not. Uh, unless, like, is there just something I'm not seeing about Jordan? Like, I mean, again, world class. His physique is not impressive in this lineup. Not to me. Legs are a little fuller here. Just the, the back shot. He's got the weakest back shot up there. Yeah, Lewis's midsection is really kind of kind of hurting him here. Is it? I mean, I think so. Now, Jordan is looking better as they pose here. Like, the more I look at it, I think he might be... He might be passing Lewis, for sure. Wow, Dorian made this call out. How many are in it? Yi Shen Cheng from China. He's in there. Dorian. Dorian, you got Anthony and Felix. Felix, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So we got. So Felix, second from the left, was seventh in Tampa last week. He kind of looks like he's in, in line for like fifth or sixth here. Anthony from France, next to him, sharing center with him. Fifth in Portugal a while back. Dorian off the left. I don't think he belongs in this call out necessarily. I see him being eighth, realistically. And then Chang, Yishan Chang, um, I just really like it. He's undersized compared to the other guys. He's just got a really good physique, though. Just really sharp. Good shape. Not dark enough here. This is where he loses it. Chang, he, he's, he loses it on this pose here. I just don't see Dorian really belonging in this group. I mean, I hate to say it. Um, yeah. I don't disagree with that. His posing's a little off. Dorian. I would like to see Anthony. Yeah, I would like to see Anthony compared to Lewis and Nathan and Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Put Anthony in that first call out group and see how he stacks up. Like that's a great pose for him. He's over here now. He's right here. You know, when they bring the uh when they bring the first call out guys back, I'd be I'd be curious to see if they bring him in there with them. But now Felix has has got him beat on this pose. Yeah, Dorian's just not lean enough. Yeah, Felix right here, that's a great pose for him. I've got Anthony in that. I've got Anthony in that. Yeah, me too. Third call out. So we've seen eight guys. We've still got another eight or nine to go. Is this everybody else? A couple of these guys I haven't seen. The one from the UK, Nathan Styles. Yes. Carlos. Phil Carlos. So in the individual, he came. He looks unreal presenting by himself, but he he's just a lot smaller. Yeah, the smallest guy on the stage next to whoever this guy is. I'm surprised to see Marius from Poland in this call out. Like, he's clearly going to win this call out. Um, 
Yeah, Stephen Fraser has no lats. This guy, watch this pose. He can be peeled. If you don't have lats, you're not going anywhere. In the final call out, you're going to see yeah, there's just no no taper, no width there at all. What we see in this, final call out. this is a very conditioned final call out. That's a great point. Man, look at that dude, the side tricep pose there. That's awesome. Nathan Styles is definitely standing out here, though. It's just not. Jinxed him. I mean, I, it, it's, I'm always bummed when I see the shorter guy taking it out over the taller guy just because I, I just I know it's easier to fill out a, a shorter frame, but um, that's kind of a coin flip. You could really go either way on that. Like, his, his, that side shot there is awesome. It's a really good side pose. Yeah, I really like Marius in that pose. The problem is he took too long to get into it. <laughs> Kept waiting for him to hit it. He took too long. This is that situation, though, if you're on the outside wings here at this point, you've been on stage for a long time. This is where you're saying, like, fuck, get me off this stage. Like, you know you're coming in at the bottom of the, the bottom of the heap, and you're just so fucking tired. Like, get me off the stage, please. <laughs> I've been there. That was a good final call out. All right. The battle, this is the battle for second place, gentlemen. So, battle for fourth. No. I'm sorry. Fourth, 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 fifth, and sixth fourth, in front of us right now. Because we have Andrew Jack who didn't get pulled out. Yeah. And then who is the other one that we missed? We on? have Lewis Breed and, and Felix. And Nathan was at, was pulled away from this call out, right? So we have Nathan Jordan and Andrew left that's, after this. That's yep. right. Hmm. So, we gotta do so that's Lewis in the middle. He was Lewis looking to be fourth in the first call out. Yeah. That's, his, his that's his Felix and Anthony. Round of yeah. Yeah. I mean, Lewis is, like, absolutely crushing on that pose right there. There, too. There, too. It, it, it is hard to, like, to win a, a back double bicep and a rear lat spread also. Like I said with the women, like, you got to have the ability. Like, your back has to be pretty comprehensively built to look good in both of those. And to beat two other guys in both of those shots when you're all pretty evenly matched is a big thing. Yeah, Lewis is the guy here, I think. He's got more size than the others. He doesn't really have any glaring weaknesses. Yeah, I would put Felix. I mean, if, if that was for fourth, then um, Lewis is fourth. I think Felix was fifth, and then Anthony would be sixth. Here's your top three. I mean, I don't know what the point of this is. Nathan and Jordan. Honestly, like, I get what they're doing here, but, like... Andrew needs to not be in this call out. We know he's first. Everybody knows he's first. That's not going to surprise anybody. Get the other two guys up there next to each other without him in the middle and look at that. Like Andrew has done what he needs to do. Get him off stage. We know. Uh, Jordan versus Nathan though, a little bit of a toss up, but you've got this guy in between them. It's like as, as far as like being the head judge and how you're manipulating the show, it's not how I would do it. Nobody's ever asked me to be a head judge. Just saying. He's a six foot two action figure that was shipped. G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. Yeah. yeah. G.I. Jack. G.I. Jack. It does look like an action figure. Yeah. He has he looks tired as shit. All these guys look tired as shit, and Nathan's just doing a worse job of hiding it. I would like to see somebody closer to Andrew's level here, but it's just yeah, That's insane. Uh, first round, I actually had Nathan on top of I him. Agree. I, I, I agree. think it switched. Again. I don't think it's any fault of Nathan. I think. <laughs> to be honest, as far as second and third, I think it's a coin flip. Realistically, um, I really, I, I, I stand by the fact that I had Jordan at fourth initially um, in that first call out. But here, it uh, like he definitely kind of was gaining ground as prejudging went on, and definitely started to look a little bit better. So I think. <sighs> He might have crawled all the way up to second, maybe third. Could be either way, to be honest with you. So there it was. That was pre-judging. And just to be clear, pre-judging is when pretty much everything's determined. Then you come back for finals and the placings were no real surprise. In first place was Andrew Jacked to the shock of absolutely no one in the crowd. Second place uh, did end up being Jordan Hutchinson. Well earned, I thought. Uh, third was Nathan Epler, and then fourth was Lewis Breed. So 
Uh, not a not a huge surprise there. Like I said, I feel like it could have been a coin flip between Jordan and Nathan for second and third. And realistically, it just goes to show like how much things can change when people first come out, like in the individual presentation and the start of the callouts, and then you go through everything, and then you bring the the top guys back on, and everybody looks a little bit different. Like I did not think that Jordan looked particularly strong at the start of prejudging. I mentioned that I didn't I didn't think I didn't have him placing very high. To his credit, he got better and better as prejudging went along and so I feel like it was it was earned. I don't think if either Nathan or even Lewis had crept into a higher spot you could really argue that too much. Um, I think there's there's valid arguments to be made all around for that. Rounding out the top eight after that we had Felix Norman in fifth, Anthony Gell uh, in sixth, Yisheng Cheng in seventh, and then Dorian Haywood in eighth. Anything I didn't like about it? Um, did anybody get robbed? Honestly, I think Marius Tomchuk kind of got robbed. I think he probably should have finished in that top eight. He did finish ninth, just outside of it. Um, I feel like he probably deserved a little bit of a higher placing. Um, as I noted at the end of the Women's Physique recap video, which I posted yesterday, this is really the last big pro show of the year in the States. There's a few master shows still on the agenda, and there are shows in, I believe, France and the UK still to come. Um, but this is it for the States, and then we're looking at the Olympia in mid-October. So the Olympia qualifications aren't exactly finalized, but they're pretty close to it at this point. So it'll be curious to see what happens then. I will probably be back um, to keep you all abreast of what's going on then. So thanks for watching. See you then.